<laughs> well, drop the ball on that one. Let's figure it out. Pulling it now. Three in a car, one in a truck. Be valuable and adding value for your clients. No messing around, we're straight into it. We've got um, an install up in Hendra, just on the north side, and then we've got another one, uh, Kenmore or something like that, which is a really big one, probably needs two loads in the truck, and then we've got a tiny one at the end of the day, just around the corner. So three so installs. Three installs. Yeah. Good timing. How's your weekend? It was good, I was here yesterday. We um, had a big job lock in. So, it's here doing five bedroom, three living area house that we're installing today. And Father's Day, Jake didn't set the bar very high. He missed Mother's Day this year, oh. so. So, it wasn't Calling too hard me out on to follow up on that, I know. <laughs> well, drop the ball on that one. Yeah, Janessa is away, because I felt bad being the sort of a boss that didn't approve leave. And so then I approved three weeks of leave over September. I'm an idiot. I won't do that again. So Phoebe, how was your Monday? God, it was really busy. I didn't install today, Cody. Me. Normally the team are out and I'm helping, but so I did, did was lead did on that. Did you take that. some photos? I did. I took lots of photos. I'll oh, show them. We'll put them up now. Yeah. Five bedroom house, three living areas out um, west Brisbane, out in Kenmore Hills. Mm -hmm. um, nice on acreage. With some horses blocking the driveway. Busy. Lots of quotes coming through. That's about all. Oh, lots of deliveries. Mm. Like a good delivery. Best part of the day is putting car seats in. They're not fun, even when you're doing one. Yeah. I have a lot of footage of you putting car seats in. <laughs> I know. It doesn't take so long. You guys always put the beds on first? We try to. Why's that? Um, because it just creates a first bit of wall. You can get glass in between them, TVs. Just kind of start to get the big things off early as well. And then what do you do? Uh, depending on the gap, sofas. Pretty much trying to keep the wall as um, flat as you can. Whenever you see a big gap that fits something big, you put it in there and uh, fill it up with bags and bed sides. And that started to sound dirty for a second. We are just loading up now for an install this morning in South Brisbane, which I'm, I've been warned is probably the worst access we've seen in a long time, so we don't really know much about it other than we're not going to have fun. And then we have a pack up, a big one that's sold early, so we're going to um, collect that. And then we'll come back in and just get ready for tomorrow, so a bit of an easier day. Hey Foxy TV, um, we just finished recording a podcast and a Facebook Live. We had some questions from Instagram viewers um, or Instagram followers. Jake and Phoebe answered those pretty well, I think. I'll give them maybe like an 8 out of 10. Um, lack of preparation, well, they weren't, they were surprise questions, so they've, they've done very well. But yeah, I just wanted to mix it up on this Foxy TV. It's going to be a longer episode this time because of the Q&A. Here's the Q&A. I hope you enjoy it. If you've got any questions in the future, let us know and we'll see you next week. Let's get into the questions. All right, guys, how many people um, do pack-ups or how many people are at pack-ups and what's the process of a pack-up? And these, I've got three questions coming from, this is an Instagram handle, Angela. Marulanda, so something like that. So Angela's a local stylist, she's from Brisbane. I um, did see one of her questions come up and I did a bit of Instagram stalking. Um, so you, you're on more pack-ups these days than I am. Phoebe kind of coordinates a bit, but I'm at most of them. Um, there's always at least the two guys in the truck. Uh, if it's a big job, we add a third, but usually two, and we try and get at least one of the ladies as well. Um, at a pack up, so there's usually three of us. And the reason behind that is more um, logistics. So, Cody, what camera am I looking at? Just by look the way. Yeah, way. yeah, okay. More logistics purposes because um, collecting keys, um, dropping back keys, all that sort of thing, far easier than a car, um, than the the truck with the clearance and everything like that. Plus, obviously, petrol's cheaper than diesel. We we also um, put all of the linen and furniture on the truck, and all the accessories and lamps and that sort of thing go in the car so one of the ladies is there with the buckets and we just find the timing works pretty well that by the time um, the beds are stripped um, and all the accessories and stuff are put in the buckets we're getting the truck mostly full. So the uh, process would be generally one of the girls will go collect the keys they're normally there a little bit before you um, the truck by saying you um, they'll start 
basically they start with stripping the beds. The beds are generally the first thing that go onto the truck. Uh, and then they all move on to doing the accessories while the guys start getting all the furniture out. The aim for the guys is to get most of the furniture out of the house so that the guy, the the stylist who's at there can get the accessories into their truck, uh, into their car, sorry, and then they can head off as soon as they're done with their portion to go return the keys, um, leaving the guys behind to finalise putting the furniture in the truck. Happy with that process? Yep, that's pretty yeah. close. So just it's timing and efficiency. Yep. Awesome. Um, we'll follow on from that. Same uh, person asking the question there is um, what OH&S, so sort of safety stuff, um, do you follow? Uh, should there always be two people at the warehouse and at a property? We probably should do more OH&S, if we're honest. Um, but that's a forever changing guideline. Yeah. Nothing, um, there's nothing official that we do. We, I mean, we try and use common well, sense um, and do things safely. But in terms of two people, like there's never... It's not that we have two people at the warehouse at all times or anything like that. We always, you know, when we're backing up the truck, there's always the guy watching out behind, all that sort of stuff. Um, in terms of carrying heavy stuff, I'm kind of coming at it from my point of view and, and the delivery team. Whenever we're carrying things that need two guys, we make sure we don't be silly about it and we get two guys on there. But there's probably not too much that we do official. Well, as far as um, minimum people at, um, at the warehouse, that's we don't really have deliveries or anything coming through. Whenever we're loading the truck, there's always more than one person here. That's never done on um, someone on their own, although Russ is out there now doing – he's doing the little stuff. It's from a safety aspect, we're in a small business centre complex. It's – yeah, I'm not worried about anything like that. With the girls, with myself going out to an install, needing a minimum of two people, that doesn't happen. That's, as far as a sole trader, that would never happen. You're there with a re removalist. Uh, just practicalities, that can't happen. So we try um, at most times to have two stylists at a job, but that's more for um, company um, to throw and bounce ideas off the other stylist. It's not for a safety or H&S reason. We've definitely entered this before. Um, so we refer to previous videos perhaps, but how do, how do you cold call? Uh, sorry, this is from Jade Lemonade Design Instagram handle. Jade's down the coast. Um, so cold calling, Jake, you haven't done any of this, although you're I've you're done the a couple, biggest, oh, yeah. not for a long time. Not though. to an, yeah. Jake's like, have you done cold calls? He's like the biggest boss when it comes to that. So um, cold calls, the way that we do cold calls, we approach them differently. They're not a sales call for us. They're not a sales pitch. There's a, just a, a a real casual conversation we're bringing to have with the agent, which takes, um, I guess, the nervousness away because they're, they're nerve-wracking cold calls, but agents also appreciate that they can be nerve-wracking. Um, so pretty much I said to Jake before we jumped on not to hog the microphone and I feel like I'm hogging it. <laughs> yeah, just I guess it's more for me. Um, I have some opinions. He does have strong opinions. <laughs> he always has opinions. Um, so basically what we'll do is I'll jump on, I'll, I'll give them a call. I'll say, hey, it's Phoebe from Foxy. Just ringing um, – to let you know that we're here, we're doing things differently or just ringing to let you know I've got this um, campaign happening at the moment or just ringing to let you know that um, Christmas is coming up, we're going to have an overflow of stock, we're doing a couple of free installs, um, just a real casual, it's, I'm not ringing to say, hey, use us. Um, I, the conversation goes where the, they either go, no, I'm good and they hang up um, or they'll say, I have my own stylist to which we'll say, that's awesome and I appreciate the loyalty, um, just here as a backup if you have your need. Um, otherwise, it's love to have a coffee the end point is always to get in front of an agent to have coffee with them um just or like even an having, email or an, like yeah an email that's send not, out some extra information yeah. still better i i kind of think of it as we come up with an excuse to ring and that mm. kind of sounds bad but there's a reason yeah. so we like you just mentioned a couple of them we've yeah. got this thing happening or we're we're trying something different or whatever it is um or you know even could be we're approaching a busy period i just wanted to see how you're going uh make sure that we're ready whatever the reason is it's so you come up with a reason that you're calling, but at the end of the day, it's just to say hello and literally get your name in front of somebody. You yeah, do get that, it back you know. up to the forefront of their mind rather yep. than whoever because else Because the buying. reality is, of all the calls you make, probably even of those who do styling and might use you at some point, 95% of them already have a stylist or aren't interested at that point in time. Yep. The idea is to get your name there so that when they do need a stylist, they already know of you. Yeah. So you're not the, yeah for us anyway. The point of cold calling isn't to get more work then and there. However, it's, it's branding. If we the way that we work it, if we don't get a consult out of it, we haven't done enough call, calls. Yep. So there's always in in a batch of say 20 phone calls, 20 to 50, depending on how many girls are doing it at the time, we'll get a couple of quotes out of it, quotes off a floor plan, couple of um, in person quotes. Then we'll, we'll get a job out of it. So generally, 
um, depending on the time of year. Uh, we find a real um, – res- we can def- – Figure, basically figure out how receptive the agents are going to be to our phone calls um, depending on the time of year. So during winter, um, we get a lot better response rate. Um, way more coffees happen in winter than they do, say, in spring because the agents are just too busy right now. So if you are calling during spring and you're not getting much love, that's why they are so busy. Um, and that's where you want your business to be during spring because that's the busy time. So, Yep. Agree? All right. Agree. Next question from Jody Summer has asked, she has asked, what do you do on a rainy day when you have installs? So how do you deal with the rain? We kind of don't. At the, I mean, we do and we We've don't. Been lucky. We've been lucky. I mean, in two and a bit years of business, I think we were talking about the other day, we've only ever moved one pack up because of the rain because it was so heavy. So And it turned out it was only raining in the suburb we were in, yeah. not in the suburb where the rain was Look, happening. We, we've definitely had days where it's raining, uh, but nothing's been bad enough that we've had to postpone. Um, we've had to move stuff in the rain, but we just we be careful. So obviously you've got to think about the, the client's house and bringing mud and water in. So we always either take shoes off if it's bad enough or we, we have um, mats down for in and out and for the fabric Covering. furniture, we try and cover it. I mean, we just try and do it quickly, to be honest. We had um, that cyclone that came far enough down to Brisbane that we were operating at that time, but we were only pretty new. So I had um, four consults on that day, three cancelled. I was like, what's going on? Get the kids to daycare. They were turned away because the cy- everyone had closed. Um, made it into the city for the consult and then took oh, three hours to get back home. So that would be the worst story as far as rain goes for us. We haven't had to shift and let anybody down. I think that would be the hardest part, letting people down um, when it rains. But if we can't get it in, there's no way photography is going to happen that day because it's not going to get a very good photo if all it's doing is raining outside. So photographers generally shifted as well. Yep. Okay, um, another question from Angela. How do you do so many installs in a day and how long does it take to usually do one install? Um, the number of installs in a day depends on the time of year. Um, we, at the and, moment... And the size of the property. Oh, yeah, that, that too. Thing, yeah. Um, at the moment, we where we want to be is two, at least two a day. No, two. Two a day on average is about where we think the truck can yeah, at least be. Two. Yeah, um, um, So, at the, and at the moment we're at... Two but but to clarify, that means to, for every job, we obviously have to do a pack up as well. So when we say an average of two a day, that means four things in a day. Yeah. So some days they are all installed. So we can do four in a day depending on where they are. So travel time um, and what size they are and whether we have to, you know, we can only, sometimes we can get two on a truck at one time and they're suburbs next to each other, something like that. It's so. all logistics, all behind scenes. So that that's, I've gone from um, a role where I was doing more installs to now more of a logistical role and liaising with all the agents and in, um, owners, everything like that, making sure that if we have two north side installs, I try and collect, like get them on the same day, a pack up install, that sort of thing. Um, but the efficiency at the install, and if this is something, um, having talked to a lot of stylists, um, there's big variation in how long an install can actually take. Um, there are stylists in um, Brisbane, I've heard from agents that do take a couple of days um, to, we, like we will on average take two hours for an install. Um, if everything goes smoothly, everything's just like just straight in, no access issues. There's nothing of the clients to move. It'll be two hours. If it takes there's anything... There's a lot of planning that goes before yes, that, obviously. It, That's on-site two hours. Yeah, so if it takes anything longer on-site than four hours, that would generally be a big partial of a client's home, um, then something generally has been forgotten, gone wrong, there's too much furniture to have to move, so that sort of thing. But behind the scenes, before we get there, that's when we do a lot of coordinating, uh, making sure that all of our styling pieces go into different buckets, making that... um, I'm just ignoring a phone call from an agent right now. <laughs> it's about it's live. You have to. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Um, doing... Um, Making sure that, yeah, basically bucketing up the accessories correctly, bagging up the linen so we know exactly what rooms they need to go in. Our linen's all pre-made. We know where, what rooms the cushions need to go in. We know what rooms the artwork goes in. So basically we can go, they can get hung up before the beds come in. It's all about efficiencies before we get to the install so that we can make it nice and quick. Um, because we're taking a couple of days for a client, that doesn't just put us like two days for an install for us. That would be economically difficult, but the stress and the, the um, putting a client out for two days, I, f- I feel like that would be really hard for a client, especially if they're living there. So um, we're trying to make it nice and quick. Yep. Mm. Cool. 
All right, second last question from that's underscore to me. Uh, do you, uh, what did I say? Do you use a floor plan for an install? Or do you do a floor plan? If so, do you draw it up or do you just do it by eye? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think that's the biggest difference between a stylist who charges for a consult versus a stylist that does not charge for a consult. Um, for us, we don't spend the time measuring at a consult unless there are difficult um, size nooks or like little study nooks, little spots that need, um, yeah, basically if there's anything that's abnormal about a room, then we'll measure that up. But we don't do a floor plan. We don't do a guide of the property. Um, we take photos of every property. Um, we've got a consult document where we write everything down, what size bed would fit in a room. What We do have our digital measure with us so that we can say if the room's 2.7 or bigger. Um, but generally, we if the room's extra large, then that's noted, but we don't actually do solid measurements. Um, and that's, I, I do the, all the quoting off the images. Um, and I think it's just coming to know what's needed into a room over, over time. Um, there are properties where we take backup sofas um, just in case something doesn't fit. And for us, getting um, the efficiency in that end um, is well worth it than spending time measuring. I've definitely I have the nothing microphone. to add to this question. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, last question here uh, was on an Instagram comment um, on a post we did last week. Uh, recommendations for removing smell of paint before putting a house on the market, and this comes from the Instagram handle Onionette. Albert and Jeanette. Don't, no, do, don't do it? Her name's Onionette. Uh, yeah, so we're actually doing an install for her. Or I'm, I'm, I'm just calling her Ann at the moment, actually. We're doing an install for her in West End um, in a couple of weeks. She's just renovated her property, um, and I was going to respond, and I still respond on Instagram. Um, my biggest recommendation is not to remove the smell. Um, and I know because they're actually living in the property, so that would be really difficult because it'd be very overwhelming um, new, new paint smell while you're living in the property. But for a buyer to walk through and smell fresh paint, it just smells clean, it smells new, it just smells updated and fresh. So I as long as it's not overpowering and it's not like um, an epoxy smell or um, that the, the really, really strong smells, I, like the oil paints and enamel scent tend to smell um, stronger. If you've just recoated, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get rid of that yeah. smell. Agreed. Yeah. Wouldn't worry at all. Hmm. Um, actually, I just came up with the question on the fly. Um, can you guys talk, and this is from me, uh, just a bit about a review of August, just quickly. Jack, I don't know if you've done you know, your official numbers and you don't have them in front of you, so I'm putting you on the spot, but in terms of um, how many installs, are you happy uh, with how August went and how's September and the rest of the year looking? I have to see if I can remember the exact numbers, but we... August was an okay month, I think. Um, I mean, it was it was it was probably good. That's probably a bit unfair saying it was just okay. It wasn't quite what we had hoped, um, and we talked about why that was um, in a recent video. But basically, we we set our goals high. To, yeah, yeah, to, oh, yes, yeah. we do. I mean, we've got big ambitions, and we want to grow each month. Um, I think compared to June and July, which probably surpassed our expectations a little bit. We were kind of expecting and hoping August would be on the same sort of level, if not slightly higher. Considering um, June and July are traditionally quiet months with winter, yeah. August coming into spring, people start moving in August, but that didn't seem to... Yeah, so we didn't really feel winter. Yeah. Um, the reason, and I'm probably rehashing a little bit, but we, we had a bit of a mix-up, so we've recently converted our um, website to a new server, a new host, um, and part of that there was a little mix-up and some of our online or well, the emails for online quotes uh, weren't getting through and we missed them for a period of about two or three weeks. So it was a, it was a mistake on our part. Um, and we know based on how many of the quotes, online quotes, we convert into actual jobs that we probably missed a good five or six installs out of that mistake. So it was essentially slow communication. People who we would normally respond to within 24 hours didn't get anything for two weeks um, and it's no surprise that we didn't get that work. So look, it was our mistake. Um, so because of that, August was a little bit slower, um, but at least we know why. It wasn't a market thing. It was something that we can fix. So feedback from the agents is that um, there's shortage of stock um, from, yeah, so there's not, hasn't been as many listings happening either. Um, but then you think the percentage of Styling would be higher, but anyway. Um, but overall, it was still a good month. Um, September, we're expecting to be quite a big month heading into spring, and we're already kind of feeling that. We've got 
I think we did seven or eight insoles eight. last week. We've got uh, eight this week, seven or eight this week, and probably the same, if not more, um, already locked in for next week. So, what's your record of how many insoles? Can you just repeat the question? In a week or what's, a month? What's the record of how many oh. insoles, Cody asked? Okay, uh, so the most we've done in a month was 26, I think it was. Um, most that was in, October last year? October last year. The most we've done in a single week was 11, which we <laughs> I think we did an entire video about that because it was a crazy week. Uh, we're expecting, we're targeting to beat that in September the 26th in a month. So by the end of the month, we'll see if we make it. Yeah. Okay, well, that's wrapping up. Thanks for watching on Facebook um, and thanks for listening on the podcast. If you like this format, if you've got future questions, just send us a, a, a message wherever you can find us, wherever you want to. Um, and thanks very much for joining us. Bye. <laughs>